I'm Miguel Delgado, a board certified plastic surgeon, and I'd like to speak today about male facelifts. Males are having facelifts more and more and more. And the technique and the artistry to rejuvenate a male face is very different from a female face. And therefore, it's important to go to someone that has artistry towards the male facelift. For example, some of the very important criteria are the male facial hair, the male hairline, the fact that you don't want to over-feminize a man's face. He wants to be masculine, but he still wants to have his youth. He still wants to look natural. And it's harder to make a man look natural than a female look natural. If you pull too tight for a male, if your brows are too high, if too much skin is taken out from the eyes, these are not good for men. With men, less is more. This is an example of a male that's undergone a facelift. Now, a facelift procedure in general is a brow lift, upper and eyelid lift, and a face and neck lift. This is typically what's termed a full or complete facelift. And this is typically done for people that are over 50, 55 years old because at that time, everything has basically aged. Men sometimes have surgery done earlier in their 30s, 40s, and typically at that age it's usually just their eyes. But if you wait till you're in your 50, 60 years old, a full facelift is what's required to have a natural look, which is critical, especially for a male. So let's look at a picture of this man. He's about in his 50, 55 years old. We'll see him before surgery. He's about 55 years old. And you see the aging of the brows, the eyes, the lower face, the, the jowls that are quite large. And we see him afterwards where the brow lift has been done. But notice it's not too high. It looks natural. You notice that you see the upper eyelid, but only a small amount. If you take out too much skin from the upper eyelid, you feminize how a man looks. So you see he still has you know, skin on his eyelids, but it looks natural. The lower eyelid is tighter. The lower face is thinner. You notice how we've improved the jowling area, but not get rid of, not get rid of, much improved. So he looks at least 10 to 15 years younger and natural, which is very important. If we look at this oblique view, we see basically the same thing. We see brows loose, eyelids loose, jowling, and a neck that's loose. But what I want to focus on is that his hairline hasn't changed any. That's very important for men. Hairline is exactly the same. If you look at the picture at the bottom, we see how his neck has greatly improved. His jaws improved. He's got a jawline, a neckline. A male facelift you want a strong jawline. Men want a strong jawline and a tight neckline. And this is critically important for a good male facelift. But now another issue with the male facelift is where the incisions should be. In general, they should be in front of the ear because the hair from the beard will be pulled inside the ear and it looks unnatural. It doesn't look as good. It takes longer to heal, but it looks more natural. On the other hand, with women, we put the incision inside the ear to cover the 
incision completely so it's not seen. Again, these are totally two different ways of doing the facelift and scar placement, incision placement. And it makes all the difference in the world for a natural look. With the male, you don't want to distort this very delicate area in front of the ear. And these are some of the primary components for a good natural facelift in men. The most important thing is picking out your board certified plastic surgeon. And as I said, you want to pick a surgeon who knows how to do male facelifts. If you look at the before and after pictures and all you see is females, um, you want to see males. Because as I say, it's a different artistry. Once you pick your plastic surgeon, you'll go in for a preoperative visit. You'll take pictures. You'll go over a preoperative plan. And very often times I use computer imaging to help our operative plan. Once this is done, you go to surgery, and one of the most important questions I'm asked by many people is about anesthesia. They're, they're nervous about anesthesia because often with facelift, a full facelift may take eight to ten hours. So patients are very concerned about anesthesia, and I'm concerned about anesthesia. I've worked with Dr. Gaynor for over 12 years. We are a team, and we work very closely to get a patient prepared for surgery. And he is excellent at performing his tasks. Now, anesthesia for eight to 10 hours on a face, you're only dealing with skin and fat and a little bit of muscle. It's not like a invasive surgery like abdominal surgery or chest surgery or heart surgery. This is basically skin surgery. So it's not nearly as invasive and it's not as traumatic on the body at all. But nonetheless, it's important to be concerned about anesthesia and get you prepared for surgery. Once surgery is done, one of the key issues with men postoperatively is they tend to bleed more than women. So the surgeon has to know that and has to take precautions for that. For example, blood pressure needs to be controlled. You need to be observed overnight. You need to have drains. You need to have a good dressing. The reason that men bleed more is because of the hair, of the beard, and the neck brings more vascularity into the area. So in doing that, you have to be conscientious of that and be prepared for that if there is an issue. Once this is done, the patient goes home with a responsible person and the key elements at home is basically sleeping elevated, icing the area down like the eyes, and keeping you comfortable until I see you three days later. We take out your drains, we take off dressings, we wash the face and we answer any questions and, and typically men can go back to work in usually two weeks, two and a half weeks in that range because men don't wear makeup so they have to be a little bit better um, healed than women who can wear makeup easily and comfortable doing it. Men can drive in two weeks, work out usually in six weeks, but it takes a couple months to really settle into your face of procedure and forget you've even had it done, the scars are looking well, you're back to working out, you've adjusted to your new look, you're happy, your family's happy, uh, your girlfriend's happy, and you're ready to go. So the facelift procedure, you've got to allocate a period of time in your life and it will be 
great time spent. As part of my consultation for facelift procedure, I often use computer imaging. I've used it for over 25 years at the start of my practice and I found it to be very informative to patients as well as myself in operative planning to go through this with patients and give them an idea of how they could look afterwards. Here's an example of a patient uh, before and this is after his surgery and this is an example of him before surgery and now I'm going to show you how we would computer image his neck and during the consultation we go through this there we go and I'm at his neck area now and I'm going to pull his neck up and I'm going to pull up a little bit more, get a, a nice angle on it. Now, I know that what I can produce in the surgical room, so I try to be as accurate as I can. So as you can see here, I'm going to show you how his neck has been changed by computer imaging and I also want to show the real life neck afterwards and you see that it's pretty close the jawline the neckline has been greatly improved and we'll go back and we'll see it again in a different view and that helps a person get an idea of how they could look after surgery. Now I could change the eyes, I could change the brow as well. In, in the front view, I can do things like making the uh, cheeks slimmer, like I'm gonna work over here this chin. See, I'm making it slimmer. To give you an idea. So the computer imaging can be used in a lot of ways to help patients visualize whether they would like the, their change or, or not and it also helps me in pre-op planning so that just gives you an idea of how powerful the computer imaging tool can be to patients as well as surgeons in the preoperative planning <music> With the uh, facelifting procedure in men as well as women, volume replacement is very important as you age. And therefore, it's done with men quite often as well, but not as um, accentuated as women. Let's take a look at some pictures. In this case, this man has um, aged in his eyes. You can see the upper lids are heavy, the lower lids are stagging with fat deposits and overall deflation of the mid-face area in this location. And we see after surgery, he's had his upper eyelids done. And for males, the upper eyelids should not show a lot of eyelid. If you overshow the eyelid, it will feminize a man's face which is what we don't want to do, obviously. You can tell the lower lid is a lot tighter, the bags are gone, the skin is tighter, and the volume from fat injections have been performed in the mid-face mid area. So instead of a flat, sad look, we have a fuller, more inviting, happy look. And therefore, this is a good example of how fat injections and volume replacement can be very beneficial in men. We've gone through a lot of uh, important information regarding male facelift, you know, how to choose your board certified plastic surgeon. You want someone who is good at the male facelift and the artistry of male facelifting. 
We've gone through the different types of incisions, the hair, the computer imaging. Um, if you're ever wanting to come and see me, I'm more than happy to sit down and go through all your concerns. We also have a virtual consultation where you can go on my website and actually send in your pictures and I can call you and we can discuss things. We can even do computer imaging uh, as well as a virtual consultation. So there's a lot of convenient ways of getting information in this highly technical world. And I welcome you to give us a call. Thank you. Thank you.